are listening to Aim Higher, a Catholic podcast designed to instruct and to encourage the daily practice of our faith. Pax et bonum, peace and good to you all. This is Aim Higher podcast. I am Father Anthony, and with me is Sister Catherine. Hello, Sister. Hello, Father. How are you? Well, I'm doing well this morning. You know, staying busy, staying, getting stuff done. It's wonderful to work outside. Absolutely. I um, I love how the days are longer to an extent. I, I like how it gets lighter earlier. Like by the time mass is over, we have mass at five thirty. Mm-hmm. Finish at six. It's light out, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know a lot of people probably like the light going in later into the evening. The only downside for us here is that the chickens <laughs> don't go in until it gets closer to more dusk. So it's, you know, mm-hmm. close to nine o'clock before we close them up. Um, I know I could force them in, mm-hmm. but I don't really want to do that because our rooster is a wonderful rooster. He's a little on the big side, so it takes him a little while to get through our his the window to get into the coop. So I have to stay up a little longer than I like, but um, offer it up. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, I mean that's that's I have to remind myself like okay so you only so only get six hours of sleep sister it's okay you can you can function <laughs> sort of well that's <laughs> and those are those are that's the give and take of husbandry that we do animal husbandry that we do when we <laughs> take on that on that wonderful task but you know but as wonderful as outside work is as wonderful as taking care of animals is. It's not as wonderful as sitting here with you all in the podcast. And taking care and of our souls. <laughs> goes without saying. But, but sometimes still, you have but to we say still, it. <laughs> but you still need to say it. Yeah, it goes without saying, but it still needs to say, doesn't it? We still need it, to say it. It, it does, because uh, I think I think if we latch on to that, it goes without saying. There's a lot of missed opportunities to express um, really kind words. <laughs> um, I think, and that's the thing, I think we're more inclined to uh, share the harsher things, the criticisms, mm-hmm. um, rather than maybe also, because I know it has to be a balance, but mm-hmm. to share the positives, you know, you definitely want to be encouraging to your children, anyone that you're overseeing, if whether you're an employer to employee, uh, all sorts of things. I mean, it just, Definitely has to be that balance. So you, you know, you're not. I, I feel like there's sometimes like this idea that well, as long as if I stay strict and harsh and unmoving, uh, at least you know I was firm in that in that way. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I won't, I won't really have to answer to that because I was still, I was so staunch in my my mindset. And um, you know, we're gonna be judged on every word that comes out of our mouth, and especially in how we mm-hmm. express it, which is why. We are, this is part two of our um, virtues we practice in conversation. And there'll be, I, we talked about charity last time, but there was like, there's overlap um, because it's really, char- the virtues are charity, humility, and zeal. And I think there was a little overlap with that, but we're going to kind of try to focus more on the humility and zeal. But charity is in everything. I mean, you can't, you can't, without love, without that charity. Mm-hmm. It's always there, kind of like you, you know the two great commandments, you know, to love God above all things and to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you can't truly love your neighbor if you don't love God. Just can't do it. Can't do it. So. Well, we convey that in our conversations. You know, first you know, we talk about holy conversation. This is what we're talking about, particularly with other people. But don't forget the holy conversation you must have with Almighty God. That's your foundation. That's your base. If you do not have a spiritual dialogue with God, you're not going to be. You will not be able to really convey that to other people. That's what you're trying to do, to really bring uh, the knowledge of God to others by your deeds, but also in this by your words which are the expression, the verbal expression of what your deeds are, what the inner thoughts and what your intentions are. 
you know, <clears throat> what what you have in your heart should also be on your lips. Now, of course, what I what mean by that is that virtuously. So just because if we have hate in our hearts, we don't want that in our hearts at all, especially not be coming out on our lips. Because, you know, your sister brought up about, you know, harsh speaking to people harshly. Remember, one of the uh, spiritual works of mercy is. Admonish the sinner. Yes, it is. <laughs> that the one you're thinking of? No, I was just listening to whatever you're doing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was looking at I didn't realize I was picking up the sound. Of the, oh, uh, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Sorry. Oh, I muted, okay. I muted myself. Maybe it's, I'm just checking. Is it is it, is it the wrong microphone? Okay, no, it's not. I didn't oh, think it, oh. I didn't think it would pick that up so well. How about this? Well, you have a good microphone. Um, it you know, and probably I, I was like I was like sister. Do you have a, do you have a piece of candy or something? Are you gonna <laughs> share with the rest yeah. of the class? Because it's what it sounded like like a rapper. I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize for the. Uh... No, no, that's okay. I was just I I I got distracted because I was curious what you were doing. <laughs> And the curiosity killed the cat, but it might have killed the podcast. No, it didn't. It did not kill this episode. But uh, and just remember, as St. Paul said, speak to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual canticles, singing and making melody in your hearts to God, to the Lord, excuse me, giving thanks always for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. So, in your hearts, let the melody be in your hearts. And like any melody, we're singing the song. And, you know, figuratively speaking, of course. Uh, but that is something that we, we should never tire to convey to other people. That, it, you know, to speak to them about God and to... to uh, want to encourage him in the faith. That's why I brought up admonishing the sinner. We sometimes feel, though, oh, well, we might have to be harsh with somebody. The intensity of our admonishing varies from case to case, but it all always has to be underlined with charity and with that humility. Because if we're not humble, in our admonishing somebody else, we can that we can then look uh, puff ourselves up. Most of the time, when we're correcting someone or we present it, we have to first look at ourselves. I remember Bishop Lewis many years ago uh, told me, and we're speaking about holy conversations and about about especially about the priest. And how he has to uh, judge uh, the, the the soul, especially in the confessional, uh, whether or not they have proper um, contrition, proper purpose of amendment, and it's like well, then judging you know the well, I should say discerning the spirit. Is it the spirit of God? Is it the spirit of of the devil? What is it? He said, how, no, how, how do you test it? How do you practice this? You do it on yourself. Virtues to be practiced in conversation and in anything begin with yourself. How would you want you know, something to be discussed with you? How would you want something to be conveyed to you? Do unto others as you'd have done unto you. And if we look at ourselves, and, 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 you know, looking upon someone else's sin, recognize the fact, okay, maybe I never fell into this sin, this particular sin, but that's because of God's grace. As St. Francis of Assisi said, without the grace of God, there go I. There go I in sin. And so one could say, well, I can't, I can't really, um, Ah, but what's the term I want? Uh, I can't. I can't really um, connect with the person on this. I've not experienced this particular thing. Um, how, how am I supposed to talk to them about it? 
you're a human and you can you know look into your own mind into your own soul and go over these things you're not we're not always going to understand what a person is going through what may have led them on a path um away from their faith but you know that said but we're you know we can't we can know that without god's grace we could be in that same position and that's a humbling thought and i think if you're if you're really concerned about what direction that person's headed if i mean you would think they're already doing this but if you aren't already pray for that person pray right then and there that they'll respond to what god is calling them to i mean that uh sometimes i feel like we we think prayer is not enough like well we have to we have to jump on this we have to make sure um but taking a step back and reflecting on the situation mm -hmm. spend a little time in prayer will benefit you um and also when you're dealing with someone you know really just strive to just listen even though you don't like what they're saying it's especially if you feel like they're attacking the faith so listen to what they're saying give them time to say what they're going to say take it in understand where who they are you learn a lot by listening if you're always talking you're not learning anything i was listening to a podcast on that um and oftentimes people talk over each other and you know they want to you know get their point across and they'll interrupt and just trying to just i don't know if we see it as a weakness to be quiet you know i don't know if like the uh silence means consent has been taken to an extreme when just just sit there and just observe the person. like if if you actually want to have a dialogue with me you want to know the elements about the faith whatever it is let me listen to what you have to say give me a mm -hmm. chance to listen let me think on it mm -hmm. um and also and we um have uh discussion there's an episode on the gift of counsel um with the bishop and he did he did talk about this um element of silence and but also if you don't know the answer have the humility say i don't know the answer but let me find out for you and we can both you know i might have forgotten this detail or you know this hasn't come up in a while don't be so afraid to say i don't know and if the person that's asking really wants to know they'll respect the fact that hey i you know i don't know but let me find out they'll respect you for that honesty because then that's really um that's really going to make a difference in maybe their conversion because they, they see how honest you are you know you love your faith but there's you you're not gonna say well i know everything and i'm good they're gonna say i'm i'm, I'm a work in progress i'm still you know as we talk about the catholic faith is a lifelong journey of learning and loving and what better way to express that by having that humility and honesty and saying you know, i don't know but let me find out if you really want to you know you're coming mm. to me because obviously you want to know. So don't be afraid to vocalize it. And if, and if it turns sour because of that, that's them. That's, you know, they didn't want to know. Yeah. They just, they just wanted to attack you. And maybe you need to, yeah. you know, see what um, kind of relationship you're going to have going forward with that person. Um, yeah. You know, maybe that's when you have to up your prayers, but we don't, we don't have to react right away. You know, um, oh, there was a saying I heard recently. Oh. I guess it's something that about the elements of um oh, I'm mad at myself because it was it was a good it was good terminology. I know it has something to do with reaction and response, but um anyway, it, it's lost my mind. But um and often uh, oftentimes though, when we get fired up about something, it's more about our ego rather than what the person did. <laughs> yeah. So so you got so yeah. you, the thing is is there's a lot of self-reflection that has to really go on if you really want to be a true follower of Christ. Um, and it just, it's so easy to look at whatever someone else is doing. And I know there's a, the thought that when you're really critical of someone else is because you have similar thoughts and that's not fun to think about, but you probably should occasionally, like if you're really like nitpicking someone with their oddities or decisions um, and you just, you just, it's, totally taking up a lot of your time maybe you need to stop and think okay why why am i focusing on that it, am i like that and um basically giving yourself 
um, a dose of humility, if you will. So. Well. Sometimes you find yourself just having just being silent in those type of situations is the best thing to do. Because even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. That's from Proverbs. Um, well, and, and even if you're accused of something, I mean, and I know sometimes it, it, it can really hurt when it's, it can hurt, but it's difficult to defend yourself because a person already has a, 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 a an opinion of you. You know, that much you can say can change it, but your action can, you know, just kind of like, all right, well, I, I, I'm sorry for you that you feel that way. I, I don't know, like the right response to every, everything, but um, just don't be that person that you don't like to encounter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, there was a, a piece of advice I came across years ago, and this is why I was looking through my missile because I wanted to make sure I was going to get the right translation. But they, um, they suggested that if if someone comes to you with a lot of negativity or questions, whatever it is, you know, cross put a cross over your lips and say, "Glory be to be O Lord, um, Gloria TB Domine." just to kind of sanctify what's going to come out of my mouth. And I started thinking like, well, you should probably do that on a regular basis before you leave the house, before you start your work day, mm -hmm. you know, just, just a little action like that. Like just, and it gives you like that pause to really like, preparing okay. yourself. Right. And to really show that I am a follower of Christ mm -hmm. in what I'm going to say and do. So. And so much of it is not, you know, because here we're talking about like a situation or speak with someone who's not Catholic and they want to debate with you, uh, you, know, you don't always have to take the defensive. You can take the offensive. But this is where knowing your faith is important. And again, have the humility to say, no, I don't know about that. I'll have to look it up. And if somebody wants to say to you, hey, you, know, you should know this, it's like, uh, and for, for me, I've, always, I've made the joke. It's like, okay, well, then uh, explain to me the fundamentals of, of Aristotelian to mystic holomorphism. <laughs> I feel you should know that. Um, but of course, that's not being sarcastic. Uh, don't it's actually say you. that. Um, <laughs> but you just, you just kind of, you just say, well, you know, that's the way it is. Maybe I should know this. Maybe you're right. Maybe I should know how to answer this. Maybe this is something that I need to understand so I can explain it to you. As yeah, a, but, thank you, you know, for bringing my, that to my attention. I need you. to do yes. better. Yep. <laughs> That's an act yep. of humility right there. Yep. So thank you. Thank you. I never thought about that before. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. now, now, that's something that I'm going to delve into. So humility ought to be associated with charity. The humility which treats everyone with consideration and respect. So that's what we're talking about, considering that someone else's situation, have a respectful conversation. And St. Paul says, Love one another with charity of brotherhood, with honor preventing uh, with honor preventing one another. Romans 12, 10. So what are some like the things that we can do? And we've already touched on them, but um, in in the middle of a conversation, listen to others without permitting itself to interrupt yourself to interrupting them. Feel no annoyance at being interrupted by them and listen with attention. So, or, you know, or that, so you, you're listening with attention. You're not interrupting a person, but also in this, don't be upset if they're not uh, reciprocating that to you. You just say, well, okay. And listen to, with attention to what they're saying, not for your opportunity to interject. You know, like you know, often people listen yeah. just to correct. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, people have you, you have to understand that people do have certain opinions that were passed down to them, taught to them. Like they, they're not just like throwing things out 
without any real thought prior to that. Like this is something that they believe or this is something they don't understand. And, you know, to give them that opportunity to flush it out, um, mm -hmm. put it out there and then, you know, try to really understand why they believe that just well, as we want to be understood. The thing is, is that when you are encountered with that situation, the more you're encountered with it, the more experience you have. And the general things are, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. So you may have encountered this argument, this situation before, especially if you're speaking of a priest. And you know the response. You know the general response you can give them. You could stop them right there. And, you know, maybe like eight times out of ten know exactly what they're talking about because human nature is the same. So you could stop and give them a, uh, a bit of set advice right away, but you got to take in the specifics. A person intellectually understands that their situation is not that unique. If they go, if, they, if you ask them about it, you know, when they're not in the throes of emotion, they say, yeah, I know it's not unique. And there are other people who got it worse than I do. But in the moment when emotion uh, is the dominant factor in their conveying their thoughts and their worries or concerns, or even whatever they're passionate about, mm -hmm. um, you got to take that to consideration and that's how you got to approach it. You, you have to, you have to approach a person, uh, taking their emotions considerations. You're not coddling that you're not, you're not, you're not looking to, uh, uh, to, uh, restrict yourself from speaking the truth, but maybe in how you have to convey it has to be done with a certain amount of tact to say, well, I'm just letting you know, you kind of touched on that earlier. Uh, I'm just I'm just blotting it out to you just so you know, just so uh, just so I can say that I did my part, that I said what you needed to be heard. OK, but was that the way to do it? Right. Each person is different in that. There, here's where the unique part is. There are certain people who I could take to the side and tell them point blank what they did, mm -hmm. what they should do, and they accept it. There are others you need to take the time they feel they need to explain to you. Then you need to take the time, explain it in a way that's relatable to them. And it's all, it comes down to the same uh, spiritual uh, situations. And it all comes back to that. And that's why the remedies are, are, are the same. That's why the church has that, that, you know, the sat receiving the sacraments, your prayer life, uh, fasting and mortifications, these things are in place. These things are used and people, you know, we can often be like, well, they're not working for myself. It's like, well, they're not, cause, but be honest, are you using them as well as you should? Mm -hmm. And and we're all in improvement. Like you said, sisters, like our, about our faith. We're practicing our faith. That's why we call it practicing our faith because we can always be better. We can right. always improve. I mean, if, conversation. If we had it, it, if we had it down perfectly, we'd be in heaven. So yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. So obviously, it's still working. Even the saints had to work on it. You know, mm -hmm. the, you know, we're we're doing this recording on the feast of Saint Anthony of Padua, and you know, you read about his life. You know, it was almost like this man was perfect, like right fr from his mother's womb perfect but i'm sure he had faults i'm sure he had failings the things about the saints unfortunately we talk about them in a way that they can be like supermen superwomen we can become intimidated mm -hmm. but they were but they were men and women they were just like us in that way the the difference i mean to, some would say i'm oversimplifying it but what's the difference between a saint and a sinner? A grace accepted and a grace rejected. Yeah. 
exactly it. No, absolutely. I mean, and you talk about, because obviously, sure, St. Anthony had faults. I mean, one you could kind of look at is that, you know, they wanted him to preach, and that's not really what he wanted to do. Oh, there you go. You know, he 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 wanted to, um, I mean, because he came from what the Augustinian order, yep. and um, he it was the uh, return of the first Franciscan martyrs that he witnessed that, and that made him want to be a Franciscan. Mm -hmm. And I think he just wanted to be a humble. Well, I mean, he was a humble, humble brother, but you know, just. Spend the time work and pray and just yeah. not be seen, just be mixed in with the rest of them. And it was soon revealed that he highly intelligent, eloquent speaker, and he had to let go of what he thought was good for him and go with what obviously God was showing what was good for him. And and you're and it said that that was the happiest time for him when he lived in the small little uh, uh, friary. And he took he was in the kitchen doing all those chores. Mm -hmm. That was his happiest time. Uh, and like you said, it's not so much about what we want, but does that mean even and we're talking about those things that are spiritually beneficial? The time that we have and the something that we want to do that's spirit that that's beneficial, whether it's like Saint Saint Anthony living uh, in seclusion in this friary or or whatever well just because we want to do it doesn't mean it can't be spiritually beneficial that was helping lay the groundwork for saint anthony I mean, god you know he wills our sanctification and in it's just that our will was easily in line with god's in that but now god says okay enough we we'll take you to what now I have destined you to do. This is your true calling. This was all preparation. This was your 40 days in the desert, preparing yourself. Now it's time to take up your ministry. And that can be applied to any point in our lives. You know, uh, where you're talking about a man and a woman who go from their childhood onto uh, teenage years, young adulthood, and God calls them to the married state. Your time in that and your growing is also not just preparing your own soul, but also preparing you for your vocation so that you will be an individual who will live up to the sacrament of matrimony. So that could be applied to so many, so many things. So we can't just say, I wasted my time here. If if it's good time spent in holy prayers and holy conversations. Mm -hmm. it's not time wasted and i do just think we need to do more of that having that conversation i was talking with his excellency for that last episode that you learn a lot from the dialogue um you know it is so you're talking with to the parents as your children get older it, i get it scary that you know they're as they get older they're going to start coming with questions at least you hope they will but and, and you might think, well, they're just questioning. They're just, you know, trying to be disrespectful. Now, you know your child and you probably do know when they're being disrespectful. But <laughs> also just if they're but if they are coming with questions, take you need to, don't be afraid of what you, you think you don't know. You know a lot and your vocation is is a parent. There's graces for that. Um, and if you aren't already praying for your children every day, which I'm certain most of our parents are, if not all of them, but just um again don't be afraid to tell your child i don't know but let's find out and if you have trouble explaining it i know i can speak this pretty I, I pretty confidently any member of the clergy will be more than happy to sit down and help you with that you mm -hmm. know if, if you're ha if you're having a hard time if you can't explain it and then having that dialogue having the questions and just that's where that's where stuff clicks for me is when I talk it out. So mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I can read and read and read, but I was like, uh, I need a flow chart, something, somebody. <laughs> it's one of the fortunate things that the clergy does have is that these things are constantly being presented to them. So it, it's fresh. It's fresh when when you're dealing with. You know, going to work, raising your family, uh, so many other things. 
it's not they they don't stay as fresh but you know i'll throw this out there this is why working with your children in the catechism not just grading their paper like if you do a homeschooling or something going over it yourself reading it yourself taking the time to really think about it yourself and if your children are going to school or they're going to public school nowadays i i don't encourage that but <laughs> Sometimes it's the only you, option. You have yeah. a duty. You have to take time going their faith. Not just you read it. I say to your children, you read it, but you yourself, the parent, uh, you need to know your faith. You, you who are not called to the religious life, the priestly life, or the married state, you're the single person. God has a vocation for you too. You need to know your faith as well, because perhaps you will be in a position to be a catechist for these children, to help them, be an inspiration, to to be someone they can go to with questions. That's why you need, you know, being friendly in our conversations when we deal with other people. These are things that 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 we have to take into consideration. We can't just box ourselves away from the world. Well, and I think like that goes with zeal. I think sometimes people think zeal has to be something that's, you know, spicy, zesty, fiery, you know, zeal is just really being passionate, loving it. Um, and if you really love it, you really love God. You, so you can't go wrong if you, if you, if you actually depend on him and not yourself. Um, so mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so much, it almost feels like it's a lot, but it's really not. <laughs> but, you, know, you brought up zeal. I mean, just knock down this list of zeal here. You know, zeal or good ought to sanctify conversation. In our conversation, we always should want the good to triumph. This is this is what we're not talking about the zeal in negative conversations. Now, sometimes, and I've told people, sometimes we need to we, we use the word vent. I like to say discuss what we're going through. It, some people, if you keep it bottled up, you just can't deal with it. You need to express it. So sometimes you even just need to hear yourself and then you're able to move on uh, at least to some point with a very difficult situation. So there's a difference, but there's a difference between complaining. It's kind of like if you keep bringing the same thing up over and over again to different people, now you're no longer venting, you're just complaining. Venting is kind of a one and done thing of a situation. Now, in our conversations with people, being zealous, though, looking for the good in a conversation, bringing good into a conversation, we do it by consoling our neighbor in his trials, encouraging him in his annoyances, strengthening him in his weaknesses, raising him up when he is cast down, give him good advice with, with discretion and leading him to God to virtue. For it says, only let your conversation be worthy of the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or being absent, may hear of you and that you stand fast to one spirit with one mind, laboring together for the faith of the gospel. In Philippians 1.27 and St. Peter says, but according to him that hath called you, who is holy, be you also in all manner of conversation holy. Peter 1.15. So let's look at this. Have, we speak of having spiritual conversations. It's not always going to be talking about uh, the life of one saint, talking about this point in, in your catechism. It's the everyday conversations that we have with people, helping them in their trials, you know, and, and helping them, you know, it, in their successes and encouraging them, uh, giving them advice, you know, is it, it, something that in, could be finance. You don't really think finance and spirituality go together, but leading a person to prudence, to temperance. So there is in these day to day things the good, the spiritual good that's always there. It's always there. It's oh, it's it might be underneath the surface not that far underneath, but it is always there. There's always the spiritual in a conversation. You can talk about anything. 
There's always that mm -hmm. spiritual element and there's always the good we need to draw from it. It's like Saint Francis de Sales when he spoke about the time that he. Uh, that he went to uh, one of the. Uh, uh, the rectories of his order and he came late at night, it was locked out. And he couldn't, you know, get a hold of anybody. So he st laid, sat there in the snow all night. And instead of complaining about it, he gave thanks to God for his suffering. So he, in that he recognized um, the good from the situation that, you know, he's able now to offer this up to God. And so what we deal with difficulties, we can say, I can offer it to God and having a holy conversation with God in that, in our prayer. And that's the beauty that even as we're speaking with other people, we can converse with God because God is present and he wants to hear um, good triumph in our conversations because that is the way that we give him glory. If in our conversations with each other, in our dealings with one another, the end must and always be the glory of God. Because when you say the glory of God, that encompasses everything. That encompasses our salvation. That encompasses goodwill. That encompasses overcoming sin. That encompasses everything. Give glory to God. And, you know, we say, you know, blessed be this day. Blessed be Jesus Christ. Ye yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And the self same forever. And that is the beautiful end to a conversation. Praise be to Christ and sister. Deo gracias. Deo gracias. <laughs>